In some of my earlier videos about Java concurrency and the Java Threat Visibility Guarantee, you might have heard me say something similar to this. Writes to volatile variables or exiting a synchronized block flushes threat visible variables from CPU cache to main memory. The arrow here on the left represents that claim that the um, CPU caches are flushed to main memory. However, this is not what happens in reality. What happens is that writes to volatile variables or exiting a synchronized block flushes threat visible variables from the CPU registers to the memory, to main memory. And that is what is illustrated over here with this arrow here. As you can see, thread four here is making a write to a volatile variable or uh, exiting a synchronized block and whatever uh, thread visible variables are stored here in the CPU registers are flushed to main memory. When writing data to memory, the hardware will first store it in the CPU cache and from there it will eventually get synchronized to main memory. So as you can see here, even though the CPU thinks it is writing the data to the main memory, the underlying uh, caches here will uh, will first have the data stored inside of them before it eventually makes its way down to main memory. In practice, the hardware may even choose not to flush the data all the way down to main memory. Because of a mechanism called cache coherence, um, the other threads here running on the other CPUs or the other CPU cores, they're actually able to see data stored in the caches over here. Basically what, what it means is that in case um, CPU one over here or the core one over here is accessing a variable stored in one address down here and this uh, core three here is also accessing that address. Well, the cache coherence mechanism here means that if say core three here writes to that address um, because the CPU register is flushed to that address, then already when it's stored down here in, in the caches here, then that changed value becomes visible to the other CPUs over here, even if this changed value has not yet been flushed down to the main memory. In practice, the hardware may even choose not to flush the data all the way down to main memory because of a mechanism called cache coherence, um, the other threads here running on the other CPUs or the other CPU cores, they're actually able to see data stored in the caches over here. Basically what, what it means is that in case um, CPU one over here or the core one over here is accessing a variable stored in one address down here and this uh, core three here is also accessing that address. Well, the cache coherence mechanism here means that if say core three here writes to that address um, because the CPU register is flushed to that address, then already when it's stored down here in, in the caches here, then that changed value becomes visible to the other CPUs over here, even if this changed value has not yet been flushed down to the main memory. Sooner or later though, the hardware will most likely flush the data from the caches down to main memory. And that will typically happen when the hardware needs to store something else in the caches up here and then um, there is no longer space for the uh, previously stored values in the cache. But exactly when that happens, you don't know and your application doesn't know. This is something that is decided by the hardware itself. So it is not visible to the application. That's all for this video about the CPU cache coherence mechanism in relation to Java concurrency constructs such as volatile and synchronized. Remember to check out the description below the video for a link to a textual version of this tutorial. And if you like this video, please hit the like button. And if you want to watch more videos like this, subscribe to my channel.